At 240 RPM, the human body is being exposed to almost 20 Gs at one foot away from the central axis of rotation. At 5 inches, his body is being exposed to almost 10 Gs and so forth. This means that Jeb's elbows, which are flying about at almost one foot away from the central axis of rotation, now have become 20 times heavier than their normal weight and are pulling on the arms which are also made drastically heavier. As you will see, Jeb has become quite immune to dizziness. Five pounds in the vicinity of his elbows has now become 100 pounds, which is pulling outwards away from his central axis of rotation. The forces on his body are involved in a tug of war where the outer body parts are being pulled away from the inner. For those of you who are still not convinced that spinning is an exercise, let's take a look at the space cycle, which has been designed as a possible means for exercising astronauts in outer space. Oh yeah. Yeah, no. And if you're one of the many that thinks spinning is not for you, be prepared to learn otherwise. Because, in fact, it's been found that anybody can learn how to spin without getting dizzy. And why would anybody be interested in learning how to spin? Jeb believes that the benefits will be far-reaching, not only outwards towards the stars and distant planets, but also inwards towards a universe of feelings inside which turn the key and they'll be open. Spinning exercises all body parts simultaneously. Your muscles, your bones, blood, internal organs, it is the only form of exercise that puts intense G-forces on the fatty tissue on your body and in your cardiovascular system. Jeb believes, as he has seen with his own body, fat burns away. Have you ever seen an ice skater that spins, that is fat or has large breasts? No, you have not. However, Evidence suggests that it is not only the benefit of exercise which spinning has to offer, but also something unexpected. Whenever Jeb asks people if they think that teaching their babies how to sing before they learn how to speak would initiate an evolutionary shift into the human life form, the vast majority would agree. New discoveries concerning the true nature of our genes now supports this intuition and the environment that we live in so the environment molds our epigenomes but might it do more at the far speculative edge of this new science some are seeing evidence of an astonishing possibility that genes may not be all that passes from generation to generation if you had not yet seen the Ghost in Your Genes by Nova, posted on YouTube, you should definitely watch this insightful documentary in full. You will become more aware of the true nature of your existence. And you will begin to see that, as with teaching your babies to sing before they learn how to speak, so also teaching your babies to spin and even yourself at an older age might have an effect on the evolution of your genes. We are changing the view of what inheritance is. You can't in life, in ordinary uh, development and living, separate out the gene from the environmental effect. They're, they're so intertwined. From the very beginning, Jeb saw the process of learning how to spin as the process of adapting to an environmental shift. We have this very, very static genome. Very hard to change. 
It could be only changed by really dramatic things like nuclear explosions or, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of years of evolution. On the other hand, we have the dynamic environment that changes all the time. And so what there is here is an interface between the highly dynamic world around us and the highly static genome that we have. Epigenome is an in-between creature, built in a way to respond to changes around us. Schiff and Meany believe that experience itself changes the epigenome. The fact that most people get dizzy and fall to the ground when spinning is a clear indication that this form of physical activity is profoundly different from most other physical activities. If the thousands of genes identified by the Human Genome Project symbolized the words in the Book of Life, it was the epigenome that determined how that book got read. The most important message here is that we are not stranded by the genes which we inherit from our parents, but rather are given the opportunity to reconstruct ourselves to become that person that we'd rather be. The following is an adamant dialogue found on Mercola.com, which seemed to best summarize these new findings. On video and in the background, you will see and hear Jeb performing improvisational keyboards while simultaneously performing improvisational vocals on a level which was well and beyond his grasp on the days before his spinning, which, he believes, has had a profound effect on many of his innate abilities. And the new biology, which is now recognized and, 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 and here, let me just, let's get the name so we get, we know, I can use the word that. Uh, what we're teaching in school is called uh, genetic control, and literally that says control by genes, that's genetic control. This is what the you taught in, in schools today, in medical school. Absolutely, it's in every textbook. Francis Crick came up with this hypothesis, and the hypothesis is that genes, uh, it goes, uh, people may have heard the flow, DNA goes to RNA, goes to pro the physicists going from Newtonian physics to quantum physics, it wasn't an easy transition, I mean, you made your whole career teaching of, of a material universe, and one day wake up and say, you know, everything I taught for all those years, let's just forget that, and start again, it wasn't easy, so there was a, there was a transition phase where the old thinking had to evolve, you know, leave the system, and the new thinking coming in, well, Today's new biology is, is exactly the same, but it has a more profound difference for us in one sense because the, the old physics took it like from a, uh, uh, you know, a crank telephone to a cell phone or, or, or from a steam engine to a rocket ship engine. That was the difference between Newtonian physics and quantum physics. And in biology, the new biology is going to take us from a world today uh, of crisis and ill health and, and a failing, a failing uh, uh, environment and world and take us to another level uh, of master control, control where we in our consciousness and our experiences of life will actually have power over our own lives and not be the victims that we were programmed to be. So to me, when people understand the nature of this and recognize how their perceptions about life, which, which we'll talk about, about beliefs about life, when they change, it actually has a biological connection through the energy field, through quantum physics, and through a new thing called epigenetic control. Remember, genetic control, control by genes. Epigenetic control is the new field of science. As a matter of fact, just within the last year or so, it's finally breaking into the public because it's been at the leading edge of science for about 20 years. But that science takes a long time before it can ultimately get to the public or mass attention. So they're just bringing it to the world, to the mass world, epigenetic control. And epi means, uh, that's a prefix that means above. So when you say the word epidermis uh, in biology, it is the skin, the epidermis means the layer above the dermis. So epi means above, and you say epigenetic control, then that translates as control above the genes.